Today we are going to talk about two very essential components when it comes to system design. A message queue helps you to make your system more scalable and more fault tolerant. Whereas a content delivery network or a CDN, it helps you to reduce the latency in your system. So you can see two very big pillars over here, latency and scalability. So it is very natural that these two concepts are very, very essential. So let's explore a little bit more about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, let us quickly do a recap about what all do we already know. We discussed why system design is essential and where will you find it in your career path. We discussed about horizontal scaling and vertical scaling and how they are different. Going forward, we started off with all the fundamentals like a client server model, a load balancer, caching and then databases. We connected all of them by creating diagrams for all of these. And now we are moving into the part where we want to optimize our system. And that is where we are learning about indexing, about a forward proxy and a reverse proxy. And we are able to understand all of this by using the example of a live bookstore as well. Because that is something you see in real life. And this way it will connect in your mind and you will remember it forever. So taking back our example of the bookstore, we want to understand why a message queue is important. So let us say you have this server over here and there are a lot of customers. So it is very much possible that this particular person, they can get overwhelmed with all of the requests coming in from all of these customers, right? So what can you do in such a scenario? This is where the concept of a message queue comes in. So basically what happens in a message queue is all the customers will come in and they will take a token. This token is defining the order in which they will be served. So you would have seen this in a lot of stores also, right? Although there are a lot of cashiers, then you take up a token and then you are served according to the number that's being called out. So this is reducing load on the system. This is reducing load on all the cashiers or all of the servers, right? You do not also have to keep on standing in the queue. You can just stand anywhere and then you just go whenever your token number is called out. So this is also solving the problem where you will find that, okay, one of the queue is moving faster and one of the queue is moving slower. So this is what exactly a message queue is doing. When it comes to computer applications, you can try to think of a message queue as something like this. So this is a standard queue. And there are a lot of implementations. RabbitMQ is one of them. Apache Kafka is one of them. Amazon SQS is one of them. So what basically happens in this queue is you send these messages one by one. And these queues, they maintain an order in which all of these messages are coming. So when you have this queue, you will also have two more components, the producers and the consumers. The role of the producers is that they will keep on queuing up messages in your queue. And then based upon your availability, all of these consumers will start taking up messages one by one. So it is very natural that a question will come to your mind. Why did we have to introduce this separate component in my design? What was the problem when I was directly communicating with my server? I had these load balancers and all of these things, right? But if you think about it, you are getting a lot more advantages when you have a message queue in place. The first advantage that you get is you are able to decouple the system. Decoupling simply means that you can just allot your request and then done with it. You do not need to have a constant connection. So what do you mean? Think like this. You are placing an online order. You placed an order and then you forget about it. It is now role and responsibility of the entire system to process your message and then actually place your order and then send you a confirmation on the email. So as a client or the customer, you don't have to keep on waiting. You are detached from this entire system. So this decoupling, it allows the users more freedom. And at the same time, this system is also under some less stress because it can start processing each of these messages one by one according to its capacity. And it can also take its sweet time to analyze that, hey, is this a security threat or is this a safe message? So all of these different things, basically you are able to separate the two components. And 
Since these two components are now separate, it allows you one additional benefit and that is scalability. You know that you don't have to serve all of these clients at the same time, right? You can serve them one by one as and when you have ample resources. So what is it allowing you? It is allowing you to scale your system very much. What you can do is you can have a lot of users and then you are not worried that you have to serve all of them immediately. What you can simply do is you can say that, hey, just put all of your requests in this message queue and then whenever these servers are free, they will process your message and then revert you with the answer. So you also need to understand that this kind of a model, it is on a case by case basis. You cannot expect that, okay, it is a chatbot and it will respond whenever it wants. No, that place a message queue may not be helpful. So based upon the scenario, like an example online merchant or a cart or publishing a post, these are all the places where a message queue is very, very handy. Because think about it, these consumers, they have to process the message one by one, right? Now you are allowed a certain time window in which you can process this message. This is allowing you for fault tolerance as well. So it could be possible that this server picked up a message. It is processing and maybe there is some error and this server went down. In such a case, you can ask your other server to pick up the same message and process it. So what just happened? Your system became more fault tolerant. You can handle all of the failures. So these are some of the advantages that you're getting while implementing a message queue. And just like these advantages, you will certainly have some challenges as well. And the first challenge is the ordering of these messages. You need to make sure that this queue is processing all of the messages in the order in which it was received. Or rather, you want to implement a custom order. There could be a priority client where you have to process their message first. So this is all the ordering that becomes your headache and you have to take care of it. Similarly, there could be a case when a message in your queue gets duplicated. So once again, it becomes your responsibility to make sure that you're handling all of these duplicates. And the last part is of course latency. You know that you have introduced one more component in between. So naturally, your response time will go down. Earlier, you were directly connecting with the server, so you got a response. Now you have a middleman. So naturally, it will take some additional time for the message to first reach the queue and then reach the server. And then you will get back your response. And who knows that there could be a message queue in the response as well. So it is all based upon the use case. Think about when you want to add the message queue. The benefits should outweigh the challenges and the shortcomings. If you rack your brains a little bit more, you can find the applications of a message queue in a lot of places. You all use social networks, right? And you see the notification system, correct? So what is happening? Whenever an activity happens, it gets pushed to your notification queue. And that is where you see all of them one by one. That is so fascinating, correct? And similarly, you would have seen these message queue in email systems as well. It is possible that you have a lot of messages in your outbox. You know that as soon as you connect to the internet, you have to send all of these messages. So once again, the message queue comes in handy. You store all of your messages over there and then you start sending them one by one. So a message queue has a lot of applications. Just tell me what application comes to your mind and then we can discuss it. It will be really, really interesting. With this, we can now move on to the next component that we want to surely understand. And that is CDN or Content Delivery Network. And once again, to understand it, let us go back to our example of bookstore. So let us say that you have a lot of bookstores in the city. Each are in different locations. Now, if you have to maintain a warehouse of all of these bookstores, what will you do? Will you just have a warehouse somewhere in the between and then all of the inventory of all the stores that is managed through this particular warehouse? Or think about a different scenario. What if I maintain a warehouse based upon the cluster of all of the bookstores that I have? So this particular warehouse, it can serve all of these bookstores, whereas this particular warehouse can serve these two bookstores. So what I'm basically doing is I am maintaining a warehouse that has all of my content. 
So I am able to reduce the time that it takes to go and fetch a resource from my warehouse. Basically, what is happening over here? You want to make an app that is scaling up to a million users, right? So your users can be in any part of the world, correct? So what do you think? Does it make sense that you go ahead and deploy your application only in one part of the world? So yes, all of these users will be very happy. Their response time will be very low. But what about all of this audience? For any request that they make, it has to travel halfway around the world and then get a response back once again. So this is taking up a lot of time. It may feel that it is just a fraction of seconds. But making multiple requests, it can really slow down the experience. Nobody likes a slow fight, right? So this is where content delivery networks come in very, very handy. What you can do is you can have the main part of your application deployed somewhere centrally. And for all of your audience around the world, what you can do is you can establish a content delivery network for all of the different regions. What this CDN is doing is it is storing or caching all of the content that you would need for your application. So whenever all of these clients make a request, first of all, they will try to query the CDN and there is a very good chance that they will get all of the data that they need. If there is some data that was not available or not present, then you go ahead and then query your central location. Similarly, for all of these users, they can just query the content delivery network closest to them. So it is helping you to maintain all of your resources. Think like this. You want to develop something like Netflix, right? So it is not feasible that you store all of your data in just a single location because it is very natural that the audience in this country will have different preference. The audience in this country will have a different preference. What you can do is you can have region specific CDNs. So all of the content that pertains to this particular region, you will store it over here. And all of the content that pertains to this region, it can get stored in this CDN. So you have a system where everything is available. It is very much possible that this particular audience want to view the content of this region. And it is perfectly fine. You will first look over here. If you don't find it, then yes, go and look in a different region. So you are still getting a very good response time for a majority of your users. For a few percentage of the users, it is okay that the response time can be higher. So you see, we have so many benefits when you start to use a CDN. Primarily, your loading time goes down. Your responses become very fast because all these users, they can just query the local CDN and the content will be served to them. And this is made possible because you have localized your content. And this is reducing the latency to fetch all of it and serve to all of your clients. And here is one more part. Along with all the local content, you can cache all of the static content too. For example, if you open a website, you see all of these images, these banners and all of these things, right? So do you want to go and fetch all of this information again and again from your central location? No, right? You can simply duplicate all of this information and have it available in all of these CDNs. So getting all of these images, this becomes very, very fast and your site loads up very quickly. This is how static caching is helping you to reduce the latency even further. And while having a CDN seems very, very attractive, but it comes with its own set of challenges as well. For example, you want to make sure that your data is always fresh. So what does that mean? It means that you have to refresh your content delivery networks periodically. You do not want to serve your clients old information, right? It should not be possible that you update your site in one location and all of these users are seeing the older version of site because this CDN has not been updated. So this is one very big challenge. And along with it, this is not free. When you're setting up all of these components, it comes at a cost. So you always have to make sure that the benefit is more than the cost you are incurring. This is how a message queue and a CDN helps you to build a more powerful and a more resilient system. And it is very important to understand the use case every time. And I cannot stress more about it.
just because you know about a certain concept, it does not mean that you have to introduce it. Always talk to your interviewer that, okay, what is my content? What does my use case look like? For example, if you are having an online merchant like Amazon, then you need a message queue because you need to queue up all your orders. Similarly, designing an application like YouTube, you need that message queue where you can put your uploaded videos that, okay, this video has been uploaded. I will transcode it whenever a new video comes and then I will transcode it because it is not necessary that as soon as I upload a video, it should be available in the best quality immediately. That does not happen, right? So all of this is food for thought. And whenever you are approaching a problem, just keep all of these concepts in mind. While going throughout the video, did you face any problems? Or what other applications have you found for message queues and CDNs? Tell me everything in the comment section below and it will become a really good discussion place. Also, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. We will be covering more of some of the model designs. Until then, see ya.